I think the president will continue to try to build and consolidate support among UN member states for Ukraine so that eventually when we hope that Ukraine gets to the table to negotiate that they have the strongest hand possible. And as the UN meets, you've heard Russia is moving ahead with these referendums in Ukrainian territory. Do you see an off-ramp for these leaders, especially as the financial pain and energy shortages continue in critical areas across Europe, critical countries across Europe also really feeling the pinch as a result? I think that will be the secondary big topic among world leaders, the uh, destabilizing effects on uh, supply chains and as we get into winter on energy chains in particular. Uh, the food crisis has continued even though the UN has made some effort uh, to ameliorate, but uh, I believe that um, the president has a great opportunity, not just in his speech, but in having the one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, throughout the next few days at the UN with other world leaders in more discreet off the camera settings. So much that happens at the UN is built on high expectations and a great deal of the work has to be to lower some expectations to what is possible in the end. The fact that Russia and China have both decided to sit out this UN, even though everyone else there is in person, also is telling that they weren't willing to schmooze because they knew that they would lose. Hugh, you've said that the big power of, you, of the UN is really to convene, but we're not seeing the Chinese president or even the Russian president joining in these conversations in New York City. So can the body actually work without these two big leaders? And of course, how could the reform look like given all of these comments that we're hearing so far from the assembly? Both those countries will have their ambassadors, and I know that the Russian will be sending their foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, who had previously served at the UN on three separate occasions, so he's extremely familiar with the terrain there. Um, the Security Council is imperfect, and some say that it has been paralyzed, but it is not dead. And one of the strongest features of the UN, although there are many disappointments in history, the fact is that it is drawing 160 world leaders together on the heels of a very solemn event in London. They've jetted across the ocean to be there. So the power to convene, to call a meeting and have people show up is the strength of the UN. And those that don't show up find that if they're not at the table, they're going to be on the menu.